Moose and John, and guys, it has been too dang long since you guys last saw the Turbo EG hat. The last video that I posted on this car was when I crashed it. That was a couple months ago, and today, we are going to be getting this car back together and see if it still runs. The goal has always been to go tens with this bone stock internal GSR engine, but the crash obviously set me back pretty hard. The new goal is to get this car back together, running, driving, to the track, run a 10 on the stock motor, take the stock motor out, put the built motor back in, and go nine. I wanna get this car out to the track as soon as humanly possible, but before I can do that, I have eight things to fix from the crash. The core support is really bent up, the trans case is cracked, the traction bar is broken, the radiator is smashed, the intercooler is smashed, the front bumper is no longer on the car, the front lip is shattered into a million pieces, and lastly, both front wheels and tires are destroyed. We got eight things on the list to tackle today, and by the end of today's video, you're gonna see a running 500 wheel horsepower turbo Honda Civic EG hatchback. Now that the car is disassembled, we have to do something about the front core support. It is very bent up, and there is pretty much no way that I'm gonna be able to straighten it out and resecure it. So I took to my friend, the old angle grinder. Now that the core sports out of the way and the little frame cap is welded back into place, it's time to tackle the trans case. Now I heard a couple of people telling me that JB Weld would suffice. I'm only planning on keeping the setup in the car for a very short period of time to go tens, and then this whole thing is coming out. So I initially JB welded the trans, but after doing so, I realized that it's a half-assed repair and I really should replace the trans case. So I dropped the trans and got to work. Yes, that was probably one of my biggest stress points throughout this whole project was what to do about the trans, and it is now fixed. Now we can move on to replacing the completely destroyed full race traction bar with one that I found on eBay. It is a big downgrade to go from full race to an eBay traction bar, but the main goal of the traction bar is to have a place to mount the radiator, which I will show you in just a moment. <laughs>
five, 10 minutes ago, and it has not lost any water. It's completely full. I think I'm gonna try running this radiator. <laughs> Boom, so I welded tabs onto the new traction bar, and now the radiator has a place to sit. Since the radiator wasn't leaking, I decided just to run it. Yeah, it's all smashed up, but if it's not leaking and it flows, and it's cooling the car, Next things on this list are pretty intimidating for me, to be honest. One is figuring out a solution for the intercooler. I was running an $850 full race single backdoor intercooler with a tile blow off valve mounted on the side. And unless I wanted to make all new intercooler piping, I had to either find a way to make this one work or buy a new one. Spending $850 on an intercooler again does not sound like something I'm interested in doing, but I had an idea. Find out. Bro, tell me this thing doesn't leak and I'll run it. It's, it's full. Oh, it's leaking. Damn, it's so close, too. It's so close. i to do some surgery. Yup, I filled it with water to find any leaks. I found one small leak in the bottom corner and I brought it over to my friend Mark at Valix Racing. Mark absolutely hooked it up, welded the crack right up, and then I brought it back over to the bunker to get it ready to go on the car. That's an $850 bullet dodged. I'm so excited. But we do still have one big problem. <laughs> My intercooler pipe that goes from the passenger side of the intercooler up to the throttle body is all one piece. It was custom fabricated by myself and the guys over at Rudd's Racing. It isn't the prettiest thing in the world, but it does work extremely nicely. It flows well being one piece, there's no couplers, and it's never popped off on me before. The only problem is the 90 degree elbow that's down by the radiator got smashed in the crash. In order to remake this one intercooler pipe, it would take probably 10 hours. So my friend Mark again from Valix Racing hooked it up with a really good idea and it's to use a silicone coupler 90 degree bend and just chop out the section of the intercooler pipe that was smashed. If this works, it's gonna save me a ton of time and allow me to get out to the track this week. Dude, I am so grateful that that worked. Everything is bolted up, there's coolant in the car, the intercooler pipe is on. Theoretically, the car should run as is. Before we test that though, we have three more things on the list. We got to install the bumper. And we got to put a front lip on this car. I thought it would be really cool if I went back to the crash site and found all the pieces of the lip and drift stitch the entire thing back together. Frankenstein mode. This is my lip. All right, here's some more. Oh sh Yo. That's the piece I needed. came out looking so gritty. I actually love it considering that this car is basically Frankenstein. I'm gonna start calling it Frank. And last but not least guys, certainly not least, as I showed you and as I previously stated, 
my two front wheels and tires got completely destroyed in the accident. I couldn't be any more grateful to my friends over at Koenig because as soon as the crash happened, I reached out to them and I asked if I could buy two new wheels from them because crash, it was my fault. My guys over at Koenig said, no way, bro. We got you. This is a terrible situation, but we're gonna help you make it better. And they sent out a brand new set of their brand new wheel, the Koenig Ultragram in carbon bronze metallic. Frank is born, the EG is back up, running, and we'll see if it drives. In the few minutes that I had the car outside idling, it did have two issues that we're gonna address in the next video. I'm so excited for this thing to be back up and running. Good to have you back, Frank. And before I go, I just wanna say thank you to all of my sponsors and everybody that helped bring this car back. Mark from 1.6, DJ from Rudd's Racing, and my friends over at Koenig. I couldn't have done this without you guys. Seriously, thank you all so much. Next video, we're gonna be fixing the two issues that it had while it was idling, and we're gonna be taking it out for a drive to see if it is still drivable. Does it drive straight? Is the chassis bent? Are any of the suspension components bent or out of whack that I didn't notice? I don't know. We're gonna find out. Please consider subscribing and click that bell so you don't miss out on any of the videos. I'm Booster John. We deserve nothing, earn everything.